Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to Sing View, and this is NK. There's a common knowledge that OLED display looks better than LCD panel, but that's a lie. That's not always the case is here. There are situations where an OLED screen can look more pixelated and cranier than an LCD panel, and people are still worried about burn-in or the fact that OLED panel cannot get very bright compared to LCD panel. So when you should buy an OLED display? In today's video, I will break it down to you from the core technology to the real-world experience so you can visualize everything easily. Now, let's get started. One clear downside of so many OLED screens is that glossy coating. The advantage is that the color looks clearer and more vibrant, but the downside is that heavy reflection. Because of that, sometimes you cannot see the true color of the display. What you see is the combination of the panel plus the reflection around you. Of course, there are matte coated OLED screen, but that option is too expensive, so I won't go into that here. The second thing about OLED display is that they can look pixelated. There is this subtle graininess that people often call this effect OLED pixelated. OLED panel place their subpixel further apart, creating noticeable black gaps in between. For small details like text, this can make the edges look less sharp compared to an LCD with the same resolution. For example, with small characters like S or E, you will see more jagged edges on the OLED screen, and with closer inspection, you might even see some green or blue halo around the edge of the layer compared to the IPS screen. So in this case, the IPS screen is clearly better. To fix this, some panels use different pixel arrangement. For instance, the Nintendo Switch OLED has subpixel placed closer together, reduce those dark gaps and making the image less grainy. The OLED panel on this Asus laptop also use a tighter subpixel layout, which help to reduce the pixelated halo around the curved edges. Besides, to further minimize the effect of OLED pixelated, manufacturers like Asus usually push the resolution up to 2.8K to improve clarity. So this is where I want to remind you, whenever you go out and buy an OLED display, always check carefully. Higher resolution doesn't always guarantee perfect sharpness in reality. For brightness and durability, this isn't exactly the weakness, but there are things that you should know. OLED pixels light up individually using electrical current, so if too much current is used, the pixel can heat up and over time, it can cause burn-in. This is why most OLED panels on laptops are topped out at just around 400 nits instead of 1000 nits like mini-LED panel. If you want OLED that reach 1000 of nits like on Apple devices, they have to use tandem OLED that's basically two OLED layers stacked on top of each other. But that thing is insanely expensive. Now, to reduce burn-in risk, brightness should be kept at a reasonable level, and manufacturers like Asus also use software features such as Pixel Shift, where the pixel shifts slightly over time to avoid image retention. But the movement is so tiny, so you won't notice it at all. Also, usually after like 30 minutes of interactivity, this Asus laptop automatically activate a screensaver to prevent static image burn-in. And lastly, OLED uses more power because each subpixel has to emit its own light. But that's only true if you use dark background where the pixels are turned off completely. On laptop where the background usually be white or like colorful like this one, OLED actually consume more power. So to compensate this, Asus uses a power-efficient chip like AMD Ryzen AI7 350. With this APU, I can easily get around 8 to 9 hours of battery life. But if you buy a cheap OLED laptop with last-gen high-performance CPU such as an Intel H-Series, you will probably get only around 3 hours. We have covered most of the things that you should watch out for. Now let's talk about the benefit of OLED display. And the biggest one is definitely color quality. Again, each pixel is its own light source, unlike LCD where one backlight shines across the entire panel. So with OLED, when something needs to be bright, it's light up exactly there. When something needs to be dark, that pixel turn off completely. 
This gives OLED extremely high contrast and better color control. The Asus laptop that I have here hit 100% of sRGB and 100% Adobe RGB, and their contrast ratio is basically just a symbolic number. In reality, it's infinite because the black is the result of the pixel is fully off. Color accuracy cameras between models. Some OLED screen can look overly saturated, or some may result in tinted yellow or red. And to measure accuracy, you need a monitor instrument like this one. It corrects color error and brings everything closer to under Delta 1. But sometime, even after calibration, some panels still have Delta E above 2. To solve this, Asus U Pantone validated OLED panel. Pantone is a globally recognized color authority. And with the ZenBook 14 unit like this, the Delta E is under 1, meaning that they are pre-calibrated extremely well. Of course, this is still assumed that the screen isn't reflecting harsh light, but under the ideal good condition, the color is fantastic. Another clear advantage of OLED is that it's extremely fast response time. Because each subpixel switches on and off independently and instantly, OLED response time are around 0.2 milliseconds. Meanwhile, most of the gaming laptop, even the high-end one, are doing around 3 milliseconds. This means you won't see ghosting or motion trail when gaming on OLED screen. Of course, whether you notice it depends on your eyes. But for many people, even 15 to 20 millisecond response time on LCD is already uncomfortable. And this is most of the thing that we want to share you about OLED display. Hope this tip will help you to find the best one that suits you. And if you love this video, please drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any upcoming videos about the latest tech. Now thanks for watching, this is NK from ThinkView and see you guys next time.